343 just released the first trailer for Halo Infinite's fifth season, Reckoning. And let me tell you now, it's actually really damn good. So in today's video, I'm going to provide a deep dive into everything that we've seen. I'm sure in my sheer excitement, there's probably something even I will miss. So if that's the case, feel free to let me know. But anyway, without wasting any more of your time, let's jump straight in. The trailer opens up and we immediately see three Spartans. The one on the left and right are both using the Mark 7 armor core, both of which I believe are using new helmets. The coatings and visors might also be brand new, however some of these shoulder pads are from Season 4. The most interesting of these is the spawn in the middle, using the Rikshasa armor core with one of the helmets present in the Halo TV series. We already knew EOD was returning from the thumbnail of the trailer alone, and I was actually having a conversation with Halo Box earlier, speculating that this might be when they finally release those too. If you didn't know, these helmets were originally designed for Infinite, but instead used for the TV show. And I'd speculated a couple years ago that the reason EOD wasn't present in Infinite was because it was instead in the series. So we might finally be getting all of those cosmetics. We are then shown a spawn using the Mark 7 core with a brand new helmet and a brand new Halloween armor coating and visor, potentially with a Halloween themed weapon coating too. The spooky season is here, so this is unsurprising, but it is nice to see that we're finally getting some form of Halloween event, potentially this season. We then get a Season 5 title card, which does have a Warthog driving past with a spawn inside, however this moves too quick for me to actually show what's going on here. And then immediately after that, we're shown the return of the brand new Extraction game mode, as we also see a Spartan using the security helmet from Halo Reach. However, you'll notice the core that's being used is actually the Mark 7. More on that later. We're shown some gameplay of Extraction on the Forest map, which was released during Season 4. And we also get to see a brand new Flood kill effect before we are shown some of the various new Flood cosmetics. This means it isn't an armor effect like some people speculated, and in fact appears to be brand new customization pieces. I'm still unsure if this is its own core, or if it's just additions to the Mark 5B, but I'm more so leaning towards the latter. During this segment, I also believe I've spotted some new armor for Mirage, but after that it goes to showcase one of the new arena maps, Prism. It's also worth noting during some of these gameplay segments there's actually some new weapon models that are visible which is nice to see, it's good to know that 343 is continuing to add more this season as season 4s were absolutely amazing, I'm already getting tired of saying the word season and I'm sure you're tired of hearing it too, but let's carry on. There's also another new helmet here and some more armor which is cool, and this arena map looks absolutely gorgeous, it looks like it's going to be a ton of fun and one of the most unique ones yet. Especially because it has its own little hazards. There's these little blocks of blamite that you can shoot that will explode into various crystals that will track down and blow up your opponents. Using these efficiently will definitely be the key to mastering this map. We also then get introduced to the other new arena map, Forbidden. It looks like there's no BTB map this season which is extremely disappointing. But, for various other reasons, I can let it slide this time. Forbidden aesthetically looks very similar to Forest, which actually means it looks really, really good. But here we're also shown this very, very beefy infected Spartan, who was clearly supposed to be like a flood infected version of George, which I think is actually really cool. We also get shown some of the flood customization for weapons, which could come in the form of new weapon models, and also a new Halloween kill effect. And then we get shown one of the most important additions this season, Forgeable Campaign AI, which means you're going to be able to make your own PvE experiences, whether they potentially could be like mini campaign levels, your own firefight missions, or various other things. We then get another look at EOD, this time without any form of helmet attachment, and another look at the helmet from the Halo TV series. Could we potentially be expecting some form of announcement for Season 2? Or some TV show tie-in event? But one thing I didn't initially realise is the gameplay shown here against the banished AI on this Forge map is actually on one of the brand new Forge templates, which is the snow one, and it looks like we might have some new items that we can use in Forge here too to make some really cool snowy experiences. And then we're also informed that you can earn Battle Pass XP in custom games. This doesn't apply to your actual career rank, which I guess isn't that surprising, but the fact that you can at least get some XP for your Battle Pass and customs is really relieving to see, especially now with Forge AI. It means you truly can unlock the things you want the way you want to and don't even have to touch matchmaking anymore. And then of course one of the biggest revelations this season is cross-core helmets. You can equip every helmet on every armor core. 
or at least I'm assuming so. I don't know if there's going to be any limitations here, the trailer doesn't exactly specify. I think it's possible that right now the Flood ones might be limited to the Mark 5B, but we'll find out soon enough. We do see Yokai here, so a nice little Magpie Leon reference of course, because that's the only reason they use Yokai. But one of the helmets shown here on this little segment is actually the unreleased Yoroi helmet that was supposed to- that was added to the files during Season 4, but never made its way to the game, so could we see even more Tenrai stuff this season? And then another huge addition is the Hero Rank reward, which is the Infinite Mark VI Armor Kit. Now, on the one hand, this is really, really cool. You sort of get to play as Master Chief finally in the game. In Master Chief's own series, you can finally play as Chief in the multiplayer. However, because it is a kit, that does mean you can't customize it, which is kind of disappointing, and you can't mix and match these armor pieces with your own Spartan. I do think this is a cool hero rank reward, but I do wish it was just an armor core that all players could have access to, and then you unlock specific cosmetics for this core for hero rank. But it is safe to say this is definitely the best Chief has ever looked. And this core, this kit, just looks so good. Which means I might have to actually grind the game to unlock it now. We also get this shot where the player is looking over the cliffside on Oasis and you can actually see a new model for the bandit rifle. And just when you think the trailer's over, we're hit with a brand new bombshell, which is that Firefight King of the Hill is coming to Season 5. I don't think this will be a launch mode, I do think this will be some post-launch content. I could be incorrect again there, but it is so cool to know that we're definitely getting PvE content and a lot of it. We get some gameplay of Firefight in the House of Reckoning, and then we also see some more Firefight on Oasis with a Mark V armor core. Which, although you only see it from behind for a very split second, it looks very, very faithful to come out of old, and oh my god, I can't wait to see more of this. So I think it's safe to say that Season 5 is going to be absolutely amazing, and I truly cannot wait. Everything that is being added seems really exciting. I am just a smidge concerned that we've seen no new weapons or vehicles or equipment. It does make me worried there's going to be no new sandbox additions here. But because we are getting additions like Firefight, 4JI, some gorgeous new maps, some gorgeous new armor, and cross-core, I am very, very excited, and I think I'm going to really enjoy Season 5. But I am curious to hear what everyone else has to say. If there is anything I've missed in the trailer, feel free to let me know down in the comments. I did try to get as much as possible, but I would not be surprised if there's something I haven't touched upon. And just when I thought I was done, IGN have also just posted a bunch of stuff regarding Season 5, so I'm of course going to go over all of that too. In one of the first videos they posted, they spoke about Extraction a little bit and mentioned how it had been reworked to fit infinite maps, but of course it does seem like it's going to play very, very similarly to how it did in Halo 4, and to be fair, Extraction is a pretty fun mode, so I'm excited to see this come back. They do also mention in this video about cross-core helmets that it will be applied to every helmet and every core, so this is cool to see. Again, I'm not 100% sure if this applies to the new Flood helmets, because I'm really not sure how they're going to work at all, but time will tell. One thing that is very interesting is that the Battle Pass has been reduced from 100 tiers to just 50. This is supposed to be so they can focus on quality over quantity, which I guess does make sense. The rewards do seem a lot better, and there'll be less filler this time around, since I'm assuming emblems and coatings will all be on the same tier now. And although this does make sense, at the same time, it is kind of disappointing because you'll get through the battle pass a lot quicker and have much less to do. Now, if they are to add even more rewards to the overall ranking system, then fair enough, I get this. If it's more than just the hero reward, then I won't have as much of an issue with this. But the fact that these seasons are as long as they are, and it's really easy to get through the battle pass, I think a lot of players will find themselves getting bored as far as progression goes pretty quickly. That's not to say the modes themselves won't be enjoyable, and obviously I'm just going to enjoy playing the game, but at the same time, I do like to have something to earn while I am playing. You will still earn a thousand credits off your battle pass, so I don't know if this means they're going to be compressed to 200 per tier as opposed to 100. They do mention that there's a lot of quality of life changes, which is good to hear, and we'll be hearing more about those from 343 soon. Stuff like changes to the challenges being visible on the menu, UI improvements, and various other things. We do actually also see Yokai on the Chimera core here, so that does go to show that helmets will be on every core, which is nice. They do mention in this that the hero rank will reward you the Mark VI kit, which we also know, and they do weird it as like an exclusive coating that's coming. I don't know if this means you'll be able to apply Chief's coating to every other core. I don't think this is the case. It might just be a little bit poorly weird on IGN's behalf, but that is something to consider, I suppose. They could, of course, just be referring to the Chief coating that is automatically applied to the armor kit. In this video as well, IGN do clarify that 
Firefight will be coming the middle of the season, not straight away, which isn't unexpected. It does mean that we've got plenty of things to look forward to as the season goes on, and it's not just throwing everything right out the door day one. I'm now in the process of watching the 14 minutes of season 5 gameplay that IGN have also posted, and straight away, my doubts have been proven wrong in regards to the Flood helmet only being on the Mark 5B, as straight away we do actually see the Flood EVA helmet on the Mark 7 armor core, so this is also really good news. It also appears the Spartan has a brand new Christmas light armor effect on his wrists too. In the gameplay they showcase, we do get to see the new maps, the first of which being Forbidden, and once again, I've got to reiterate, this map looks gorgeous. I love the Halo 2 Delta Ring, Forerunner structure vibes it's got going on here. But overall, with this first match, there isn't really a ton to mention. It's just a game of CTF on one of the new maps, and although the map looks great, I don't really have a ton to analyse here. Unless, again, it's possible there's something I missed. During the second match they're playing on Prism, it looks like the Needler is on a power weapon pad, which is interesting, unless it's the Needler variant. Again, this map looks gorgeous, and here we do get to see some gameplay of Extraction, and of course it seems exactly how you would expect it to be. Now one of the main things I took away from this match that Hollowtide actually pointed out on Twitter, is that at one point the player walks towards a bandit rifle that appears to actually be a weapon variant, the Bandit Evo, and it appears to actually have some form of a scope. So although we might not get a new weapon, we might potentially receive more weapon variants, even if it's just the Bandit, which to be fair, I'm completely fine with. Okay, I think that does actually go over everything now, but again, let me know if there is anything I've missed. Thank you all for watching, let me know what you think down in the comments, and I'll catch you all in the next one.